Hello and welcome to day two of the 30 day chart challenge. Today I will explain how you can create a tree map in R with the tree map package. I am following the overall categories of the challenge, meaning I will create the first six tutorials on comparisons and then the next six on distributions and so on. And yesterday I started the challenge by making a donut chart representing part to whole, but for the next videos I won't be doing the specific subgroups, but I will be using the code and examples from the R graph gallery where I pick different representations for each different category. And today it will be tree map. A tree map displays hierarchical data as a set of nested rectangles. Each group is represented by a rectangle, which area is proportional to its value. We will start with a very basic tree map then add subgroups to each major group and in the end look into how you can customize your tree map with changing labels, orders, line widths and using different colors. And in the end I will show a tree map representing the US budget spending from 2015. To create the most basic tree map we start by installing the tree map package and then loading it with the library function. We create an example data set with three different groups, one, two, and three, that have different values, 13, five, and 22, and store it in a data frame. This data set is all we need to create a basic tree map. You can load the help for tree map function like this, and then see what the different arguments mean. You could also use the tab on your keyboard to see that you need a data frame that is required an index that specifies based on which column you want the values to be grouped, the V size that specifies on which column the rectangles information will be based on, and the type that determines how the rectangles are colored. Let's run the tree map function for our example dataset with index equals group and V size equals value and type equals index. Next, we're going to build a multi-level tree map. So again, we have group one, two, and three, but additionally, we will have subgroups. Four subgroups for group one, two subgroups for group two, and three subgroups for group three, all with different values. So the new data set looks like this. You have your main group repeating four times, giving space for four different subgroups and its values, and then two subgroups for group two, etc. For plotting, it is now very important that for the index argument, we specify the hierarchy. So the first column specifies the main category as group, and then it's followed by subgroups. Now you can see that all the subgroups subgroups 1, 2, 3, and 4 that belong under group 1 have a similar color. The indexing specifies which coloring type we want to have and the two subgroups for group 2 have a similar color and then the three subgroups for group 3 as well. Let us now continue with some customizations of the tree map. First, we can manipulate the font size. We provide a vector of numbers for the font size and the first value will be related to the group and the second one to the subgroup. As you can see now, group 1, 2, and 3 have bigger letter sizes than the subgroups. We can also adjust the font color for the labels. Again, the first argument goes to the main group, making the letters white, and the second argument goes to the subgroup, making it orange. There are four different values we can use for the font face. Value one would be normal, two is bold, three, which we use here now for group, is italic, and four is bold italic. So when I use two as bold for the group, the letters get bigger, and one is normal font face. You could also specify that the background labels are transparent, which would then remove the shading behind the group font. We also do have control over the placing of the labels. Here we have to provide a list where the first concatenated vector contains the positioning for the group and the second one for the subgroup. If we would have another level sub subgroups, then everything would have three arguments. And now it first specifies the position on the X axis and then on the Y axis. So if we specify center and center, the main group will be in the middle and with right and bottom, it would put the labels of the subgroup on the bottom to the right of the rectangle. By default, the inflate labels is set to false, but if we set it to true, then the label size would be inflated depending on the size of the rectangle. This will sometimes lead to label size overlapping of other labels, and with the argument overlap label, we can force it with a value from zero to one to always print the label by setting it to one. There are two arguments we can modify to change the border colors. So 
By default they are black, but if you specify black for main groups and white for subgroups, you will get a different color within each main group. In the width of the border, the line width can be adjusted with a vector as well. And here we can make it wider for the main groups and a bit smaller for the subgroups, looking like this. We can also give the tree map a title and specify the font size of the title. And you can also use pre-specified color palette where you can choose set one, two, three and many more to adjust the colors. I want to finish the video by showing an example of a tree map with more recent data from the US federal budget from 2015. It's based on official White House data that was gathered on the nationalpriorities.org project. Here they list the federal budget for 2015, which was 3.8 trillion US dollars that make up about 21% of the US economy measured in gross domestic product. And this would average to $12,000 for every woman, man and child in the United States. They split the budget into mandatory and discretionary spending and interest on federal debt. So here you would have a pie chart, how the 3.8 trillion come together. And then they go into more detail for each subsection. The discretionary spending refers to the portion of the budget that is decided by Congress through the annual appropriations process each year. Mandatory spending is spending that Congress legislates outside of the annual appropriations process, usually less than once a year. It also includes widely used safety net programs like the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program and a significant amount of federal spending on transportation, among other things. So now I have these numbers in an R data set called US Spending 2015 with the spending values in billions and the main category categories being group 1, 2 and 3 and then subgroups for each main group. The dream map will be generated as before with the data set specified and then index and resize and the type. I mostly used all the arguments we did before. I put the main group on the center top and then the subgroups in the right in the middle of each rectangle and gave it an appropriate title. So this is the plot we get with the big blue purple-ish rectangle representing the proportion of the mandatory spending, mostly social security, unemployment, labor and Medicare and health, but also food, agriculture, veterans benefit, transportation and others. And for discretionary spending, half of it is military and then government, education, etc. And here you see the block for the interest on federal debt. This concludes the end of this video. I hope you learned how to make tree maps. Maybe you'll use it for your own visualizations in the future. Tomorrow I'll focus on comparisons via bar plots. Until next time, here at the Data Digest.